Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday. It is September 15th, and today is the 69th, woohoo, 69th uh, weekly hangout in a row. Um, so, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I would say if you're a collector, you know, hey, we can all get hit by a car tomorrow. So, if you have a collection that has value to it and you don't want that getting lost, I would make sure that you have a hard copy of your provenance. You have a soft copy, a digital copy of it and at least two places. And you have someone that knows what you have. This is not a garbage pile of rocks. This is my retirement. <laughs> and here is where the database can be found. Here is a physical copy of it or here I'm going to email you a link. So in case I ever kick off the planet, when you're doing my end of life stuff, here's the, the, the file you go to. And it gives you the Bible of, of my collection. I have little serial numbers, <clears throat> little stickers that I, that I stick on my pieces. So each, each item, when it goes in my collection, uh, is put into a Google spreadsheet that's stored on my computer in several place, in places. Uh, it's also stored on a cloud, obviously, and there's many backup generations of it. Uh, and I basically create an entry for that serial number and put all the information in the database. So in case it gets separated from the ID, and <clears throat> this is the second volume that I have right now. <clears throat> so if you look in here, you'll see all my COAs are numerically ordered by the collection, my personal collection number. Uh, any, any letters or provenance or anything that goes with it goes in here. And when I don't get a, a, a COA, I create my own. That mm -hmm. way, now the piece has provenance. If it ever leaves my collection, it has provenance. <laughs> now, the, the reason that we're all aghast about that is <clears throat> for those on, on uh, YouTube who may not understand, there's three main classifications of Martian meteorites. There's, and they're named after the original uh, meteorite that, that was classified. So this is Shergati. So all Shergatites are named after this Shergati witnessed fall. And then the next one here is actual, the, a piece of Nakla and all the Naklites are named after this one. And then the final one is the Chesigni and all Chesignites, the most expensive ones basically are named after this <laughs> one. Yeah. Wow. That's an amazing little collection there, buddy. And then these are the different classifications for the different kinds of meteorites I have. That's awesome. So then you can expand that. And so then like under um, a chondrites, I have the erg chech and under iron nickel over here, I've got a goo doll, compo this yellow and all the other ones listed there. So then you take that and then you can expand those. So under erg chech, you expand it. And then I've got the listing right there. And it links, I can add the price I paid for it and the source I, I, I got it from. And then you add another level here and I've got photos. And then I attached all the photos. Wow. So that, Very nice. Right there on my phone, I've got your um, certificate of authenticity right there, the front and the back. <laughs> right? and Dang. Then, then the different pictures uh, that you sent me. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I got my Meteorite of the Month Club yesterday. I got the uh, NWA 3133, 1.82 grams. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice. 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 And then thanks to you, Topher, uh, your good word. I got the uh, bonus sign-on bonus last month's Aubrey. So I got 0.37 grams of a couple of slices there. Nice. Yeah, Glad man. they took care of you, buddy. Yes, they did. So thank you. Hey, everybody. Hope everyone's doing great this evening. So, uh, yeah, I got a couple of things I, uh, I wanted to show off and also talk about. So you had uh, mentioned, you know, how does everyone do their um, their pieces uh, and what I do is, I know you said, you know, it's crazy to do the numbers. I, I do the numbers. Um, mm -hmm. So these are actually new tectites I just uh, picked up over the, the weekend. I uh, was hanging out with John Higgins. Um, nice. So these are, are waiting, awaiting their numbers on there. But there was a couple in here that I thought were really cool and I wanted to share. And this out one I had not Out of curiosity, seen. What, you, what is that? Is that white out or is that stupid to ask? Uh, no, yeah, it's just white out. Um, so I know people use different uh, paints, and I just use I use white out, and I use uh, Sharpie on them. Uh, this this is a slice. Um, that's big. That's so nice. everybody was showing off their uh, meteorite of the month thirty one thirty three. Uh, that yep. was the second one, uh, and I know Pat mentioned that started out as a uh, 
as an achondrite, uh, and then it got reclassified since what it was paired to uh, was a much smaller stone, which was the first of the two, which was this guy right there. Ooh, nice. 2653. Wow. Um, and this had an incredibly small total known weight. It was like 51 grams. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was the first of the CV7s, which filled up all the, the, the CV numbers. Um, so being a subtype collector, I had to go out and get that. Yeah. And I, I agree with Cameron. I kind of have a collection with a one way door. It all goes in, it doesn't come out. So I, I put the little labels on, uh, by hand painting them. And then, uh, I never have to worry about it really coming off. Or, it uh, looks so choice. Piece. It looks so choice by the way, too. You have a bunch of hand painted samples. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, what kind of record keeping you do? Well, uh, like you, Topher, I keep all my COAs on a binder. Uh, I have a couple of COAs that are eight and a half by 11, so I, I can't really keep them with the specimen. And I keep that binder uh, separate and I keep it up to date. But uh, for my inventory, I keep an Excel spreadsheet and there's, there's 50 entries per sheet here. And uh, on the sheet, it's in chronological order by acquisition date, which is over here. Mm -hmm. And I number them uh, with my own number, starting with number one all the way up to 250 or something like that. Damian in Croatia. Uh, I'd listen to you, buddy. I didn't, I didn't sneak a peek at this video, but I'm hoping it's <laughs> about your brand new cabinet. Let's check it out. This is my new display cabinet for all my meteorites. On the first shelf, we have all my chondrites. Two wonderful donations from Pat Brown take the center stage. Nice. In humidity control boxes, we have carbonaceous chondrites on the left and ordinary and some of the more historic ones on the right. In the second shelf is reserved for our chondrites, mostly irons on the left and other chondrites on the right. The detail it's, in that in the little individual grains is stunning. Mm. I got to see a super high res uh, version of that photo that that just goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> it's great. Look at this feature up here. This shock veining, how it comes together. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Look. <laughs> Look at the 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 little tiny laths inside mm -hmm. those darker crystals. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Look at this over here, how it all like spiral sprawls yeah. out. Yeah. That this is, is crazy. Stunning. Yep. Have any of you seen an ungrouped chondroit with a similar structure? No. <clears throat> Next is my oh. first angrite. And one that was on my wish list for a long time. That's a nice uh, showing right there of iron meteorites in their different states. You, know, you have the, the Wolf Creek, which is well eroded. You have the, the orange little nugget there, which is the, is that the Brenham meteoroid? Yeah. 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 And then over on the left-hand side, the Gebel Hamel is uh, showing that beautiful tangerine skin that we like to see on it. We're checking in with our good buddy, Marco Geiser from Germany. Last week, he did a fantastic video and I've, we've gotten, I've gotten so much positive feedback about his video of astrophotography and the sun. Just remarkable. If you haven't seen that video, go back to last week's Hangout and check it out. It's remarkable. It's, yeah, it's stunning, yes. Um, Today, Marco is showing off a new upgrade to his uh, telescope that allows him to track galaxies better and take better pictures of them. So take it away, Marco. Last days, we had a period of very stable weather, so I was able to do some astrophotography. Here you can see my deep blue, it's a MEET 14-inch Alex 600 schmidt keselgrain telescope. In constellation Pegasus, there are so many wonderful galaxies. Several of them were target for my multi-night imaging session. 
And now we have a look into Stellarium, a planetarium software where we can find all these nice objects. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Seven and a half hours of capture. Now I want to give you a closer look to all those wonderful galaxies. Let's start with NGC 7331. That oh is my God. amazing. Look at all those dust bands and all those background galaxies. I am really curious to ask his opinion of this right here. A binary system? It looks like that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he'll mention that. It was my first ever, and Topher, you should recognize this. Oh, yes. This is my first ever mesosiderite um, that I cut. This is a Beautiful. stone that is um, going to be classified with me and Topher as co-main mass holders. You know, maybe if you etch it, you should. Try I would love to it. see it etched. I was yeah, just thinking. Oh my that. god! I was so thinking about that. Like when I was cutting it, especially etch like there's a thing. Couple, etch it. There's a couple pieces like that that were like super metal heavy. And mm. um, where's that little one? Um, like even this like little one, like oh, it just yeah. had a huge patch of of metal. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, wow. it, it, now the, the, I'm, I'm way, way, way outside my area of specialization, but I wouldn't be surprised that might come back as a silicated iron of some sort. I'm interested in that last slice. It had a black inclusion in it. Could you <laughs> scope that for us? Ooh. Yes. Yeah, Orthoperoxine? Cool. Yep. I mean, that, Let me that's see if I can... That's a piece that should be sent in for classification oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. As beautiful as it is, as much as we hate letting something like that out of our collection, that's a piece that we that should be sent in for classification. Yeah. And Definitely. and I've mentioned this before, and, and so we'll we'll talk about it because I think everyone on the on the crew uh the, agrees when you're sending in stuff for, for classification, you want to send in representative pieces. But also, if there's anything special, you want to highlight that as well because you want the, the scientist to have a full picture of what he's looking at. So this is this is the next thing I want to show. This will be submitted for classification. And wow! Ooh. Oh, I've already re I've already given my opinion on this one. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. I, I'm very curious what other people think. I am on board with Stephen Amara. Um, I believe it is a diagenic polymic. Yeah, polymic diagenic. Yeah. 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 Mm. Ooh, that's pretty. So this is one that I just submitted for classification. Nice. I'm, I'm really excited about. Is it what a rumor, Rudy? Think? That's my guess. That's what I'm guessing too. Mm -hmm. And that one is brecciated, which yes. is a feature of uh, rumoridia. Right. And they uh, they also have a really interesting overabundance of barred olivine chondrules. Because I'm going to show you a classified R3, and we're going to take a look at it compared to that one. Uh, oh yeah, that look that looks R all day long. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm White chondrules, they're not densely packed. I'm thinking R3, R4, somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I told for that thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spit an image. Yeah. That's, that's what we're looking at in your hand, buddy. I mean, I just felt like this was kind of a unique opportunity to own some uh, meteorite history. And... It's it's not in the greatest shape, but uh, it, it's a, it's a complete catalog of um, of meteorites. Yeah, that, that was one of the very important early collections. Yeah, up until ni nineteen thirty six, and I mean, 
there's some there's some pretty cool information and I, and I sort of would like to reference some of the meteorites in here uh eventually against metbull uh i <laughs> i found a, a a new meteorite that uh mm. that i had bought in 2017 i think um but rediscovered in a plastic bin on the floor and uh it is a um I think pretty easily. Ooh, well, oh, nice. A, Carbonaceous. Uh, Carbonaceous CV3 uh, meteorite. It's got some really interesting CAIs. And um, I spend a lot of time on these uh, hangouts and doing a lot of uh, prep form, a lot of post time editing. And uh, I do run a business of selling meteorites, not just educating for free. So if you'd like to support my outreach and you'd like to, you enjoy the videos you watch on YouTube and you'd like to support my efforts, I'd really like you to come to my live sale. It's going to be on uh, Saturday, October 2nd. They're usually pretty fun, just like these hangouts, but you end up actually leaving with the meteorites. So if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned for more information because it'll be coming down the path. That is it. We have a lot of uh, a lot of people here, and a lot of uh, people helped me get this one off the ground to a total success. So thank you very much, crew. Definitely appreciate it. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye bye. See you next Thanks, week. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.